If you ride on the back of a tiger, you can't get off because if you do, the tiger will kill you. This is the situation Xi Jinping is in. What he fears the most is actually the precise definition of three distinctively different terminologies. What are Xi Jinping's four fears? Hello everyone, welcome to my show, I'm Lei. Today, let's explore the topic of what gets on Xi Jinping's nerves and what he fears. We'll go from the obvious ones to his hidden fears. One thing that he's very concerned about is the major economies of the world decoupling with China. He's kept talking about it. In January, at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Xi Jinping urged attendees to resist the effort by Americans and Europeans to decouple from China and said, arrogant isolation will always fail. At the opening ceremony of the Boao Forum in April, she gave a keynote speech and sent two messages that can be paraphrased as, one, international affairs should not follow the lead of the United States and should be approved by China, and two, no decoupling from China. This is the second time in a week that the top Chinese leaders cried, no decoupling publicly. On April 13th, China's second in charge, Premier Li Keqiang, attended an online meeting with American business leaders, including the chairman and CEOs of more than 20 American multinational companies. Li Keqiang urged American companies not to decouple from mainland China's economy. He said that decoupling is not good for anyone. On the same day, the National Development and Reform Commission also held a roundtable meeting with senior executives of American companies in China, including Tesla, Qualcomm, and Dell. The commission stated that it would unwaveringly open up the Chinese market. This is a rare move because the commission had never held similar talks before. Decoupling is a major fear looming over Xi Jinping's head. Decoupling means cutting the lifeline of the Chinese economy, and it deeply worries him. Now, another matter that definitely gets on his nerves is Taiwan and Hong Kong. In the past four decades, communist ideology has collapsed in mainland China. Even the communist leaders and officials don't believe in communism anymore. People question the legitimacy and capability of the Communist Party. This has brought an unprecedented crisis to the party. To cope with this crisis, the CCP has adopted a nationalist approach, that is, blaming outside anti-China forces and rallying its people to solidify support for the regime in the name of countering external forces. This is the reason why Chinese nationalism has risen in the past two decades. Promoted by the authorities, nationalist sentiment has influenced public opinion. Many Chinese are looking at Hong Kong and Taiwan from a nationalistic perspective. As a result, she has to save face and cannot afford to compromise on Hong Kong and Taiwan. He has been involuntarily kidnapped by CCP's own strategy and is left with no room to maneuver. It's like the Chinese saying, riding on the back of a tiger and can't get off. If you get off, the tiger might kill you. And this is the situation she is in. His fear comes from the fact that, on the one hand, he must act tough to continue the nationalist rhetoric. He has to continue riding on the tiger. But on the other hand, he's not sure whether his rhetoric will go, how this strategy will end for him, as he doesn't know how to get off the tiger. There are two more things that Xi Jinping fears, and they're both somewhat covert. Over the years, we've seen CCP terrorizing people in Tibet and Xinjiang. Most China experts have attributed the conflicts to ethnic or territorial issues. But the underlying reason for the conflicts is that the communist leaders are afraid of religious freedom. As soon as the CCP took power, it wiped out religion in China and replaced it with communist ideology, which ran like a religion. Chairman Mao was worshipped as a savior. His red book was studied like a Bible. There were morning and evening rituals, 
which took cues from religious services and evening prayers. However, in Tibet and Xinjiang, religious beliefs are deeply rooted in the culture, and right from the beginning, the CCP has been unable to completely eliminate them. In Tibet, the regime's ongoing effort to quash the so-called Tibetan independence movement targets Tibetans' religious beliefs. Police stations are set up inside large monasteries, and monk lamas are forced to study communist and socialist ideology, including Xi Jinping's books. Similarly, the persecution of Uyghurs in Xinjiang is targeting their religious beliefs too. Various religious books are destroyed. Muslims are forced to drink alcohol and eat pork. At the core of the suppression of the people in Xinjiang and Tibet is religious persecution. The persecution of Falun Gong is another example. The Chinese government estimated at the end of the 1990s that between 70 million and 100 million Chinese were practicing Falun Gong. Since 1999, they are forced to give up the practice or face labor camps, imprisonment, and forced organ harvesting according to investigations by an international tribunal based in London. We've also seen Christian churches demolished in China, underground church leaders arrested, and Chinese Catholics submit themselves to CCP supervision. Christian churches in China have been ordered to take down the Ten Commandments and replace them with quotes from Xi Jinping. Communist ideology clashes with traditional culture and faith. Religion's moral authority poses a serious threat to the regime's legitimacy. It's difficult to brainwash people of faith, and communist leaders, including Xi Jinping, all fear religious freedom. Last but not least, Xi Jinping fears the precise definition of three distinctively different terminologies, the Chinese Communist Party, China, and the Chinese people. A political party doesn't represent a government. A government isn't a nation. For example, neither the Republican Party nor the Democratic Party can represent the U.S. government, and the U.S. government can't equate to the United States of America or its people. By the same token, the Chinese Communist Party doesn't equate to China or the Chinese people. But the CCP has confused these concepts. If you criticize the Chinese Communist Party, they accuse you of being anti-China and against Chinese people. This is a big misconception that the CCP has used to evade responsibility and legitimize itself. The Chinese Communist Party isn't China. The first American politician who publicly made this distinction was Mike Pompeo, former U.S. Secretary of State. Because of that, the Chinese regime launched intense media attacks on him. On September 4, 2020, Xi Jinping used some strong words to voice his paranoia while giving a speech. So, if someone tells Joe Biden, I don't like Democrats and their policies, and Biden responds, I'll never allow anyone or any forces to separate the Democratic Party from the American people, I'd say people would think that he needs to see a doctor. I recommend two videos to watch. One tells you Xi Jinping's plan to build a common destiny for mankind. The other is about the recent U.S.-China talk in Alaska called The Show Just Began. That's all for today. Don't forget to like and share my videos. I'll see you next time.